you're a listener of the podcast and you have not yet downloaded the Manifest It Now app, go right now to your app store and search Manifest It Now and download it. If you like manifestation and you like the things that we talk about on this podcast, you're going to absolutely love it. It is where I keep all of my manifestation resources that I personally use. We have our inner tribe community in there where you can network and collaborate with other high vibe people that are on their manifestation journey. You have my subliminal library, meditations, manifestation courses. I bring in experts every month. It's a good place to be. So if you haven't yet downloaded it, go head to the app store and download Manifest It Now. Join me on Tuesday when we do our inner tribe calls and connect with the other wonderful people in there. All right, now we're going to go ahead and dive into today's episode. I have so many things to talk about today. Um, the topic for today's podcast is going to be 10 things I wish I knew when I was 20 or when I was 10 or even when I was 30 because we learn as we grow, right? And as time goes on. And looking back, um, there's so many things that I picked up on, especially over the last couple of years that have been completely transformative that I want to share with you today. And there's so many things going on right now that I'm super excited about and I want to talk to you guys about. So number one, um, I have learned over the last year how we can embody these energetic principles that shift everything in the physical world for us. So obviously, I'm big on manifestation and the law of attraction, but I've really dived deeper into bringing more awareness to my subconscious and shifting that, tapping into my intuition and trusting it fully on a whole other level, And really starting to understand that we have been trained. We have been trained and built habits around tuning into the left side of our brain. And the right side of our brain is where the magic happens. We hold the power to co-create with the universe. It's literally the part of the brain where we have creativity, imagination, all the things that we use for visualization and manifestation are more centered in the right brain. And we've really been trained to hide that, to suppress it, to call it woo-woo, BS, you know, like, and to not trust it, not believe it. And I've known all of this, but have really learned on a deeper level how far it really goes and how much we are suppressed in that area and how to start embodying these energetic principles that don't just manifest physical things that you want. Like that's a byproduct of it. That's kind of like a, okay, that's um, a cherry on top sort of thing but really helps you transform your life into this joyful, playful, fun experience where you wake up every day and gratitude is just how it is. It's just how you become. You become this grateful being that is constantly finding all of these different ways in which the universe surprises you and delights you. And it almost feels like you start reverting back to that playful, fun, pure energy that you had when you were a child because that's all our natural state. We've just put up all these walls and these blocks to kind of shut it off. And so my very dear friend, Simone DeLora and I, we've worked together ever since she was in my mastermind last year on diving into all these principles and like seeking the truth of how do we become more joyful. And I think it's been more eye-opening for me watching her because she was in such a dark place when we started in the mastermind. And now she's in this place where like we literally are texting and calling each other every day. And we're like, you're never going to believe what happened. And like there's just constant magnificent things happening all the time in every way. Every single area of life has improved dramatically. So her and I have put together this eight-week program 
called Divine as F because it's all about tapping into your divine feminine. But that whole word and that phrase, it's so different than what we've been taught to believe it is. Like it's not this woo-woo thing for, for women only. It's, it's simply an energy that you embody. And that is where you hold your power. So we put these eight energetic principles into this program and we have all sorts of cool bonuses and a huge discount if you sign up in the month of March. So I will link that in the show notes for you guys to go check it out. And you can also watch our free workshop that we had in the Inner Tribe. Um, Even if you're not an Inner Tribe member, I will give you an access code to get in um, since you are a podcast listener. So just head to the link in the show notes for that. And let's go ahead and dive into the 10 things that I wish I knew when I was 20. Starting out with number one. Now, I'm going to probably say this and you're probably going to be like, oh my God, like, yeah, we hear this all the time, but you really need to hear this, okay? Work out every morning. Every single morning, do some form of movement. Now, I know this is like, oh my gosh, like, duh, like everyone says that. I don't feel like it. But you really have to understand how much this changes your entire life and why it's so important to do it in the morning. When you work out in the morning, first of all, just from a physiological standpoint, right? Like obviously you're you're making your body healthier. But it's also releasing these endorphins, these feel-good hormones. And it boosts your mood at the beginning of the day. When you do that, you go forward into your day with a more positive outlook and your mindset is stronger you're able to handle more and come at it from a positive place instead of starting out feeling very overwhelmed and stressed and pessimistic about whatever is to come for the day and also when you work out in the morning and you put in all that work and your body feels really good you're less likely to eat unhealthy throughout the day and break whatever routine you have because you don't want to mess up that that workout that you put in, right? Like for me, if I worked out in the morning, I don't want to go and eat a burger and fries for lunch. Like I'm going to be more conscious of what I do the rest of the day because I just put in all that hard work. I don't want to go and undo it with like an unhealthy meal. And I feel so good. I don't want to feel like crap. So I got out of this habit. I was super into this habit. Then I got completely out of this habit when I had Amelia and Aiden back to back. And it affected my mood. It affected obviously my body, but more like my energy, just feeling sluggish, feeling more down, more pessimistic. And through the 75 hard program that I did in January, which I only lasted a month, by the way, and then I failed. But even in that month, it helped me build that routine back up where I tell myself every day now, even if I completely don't feel like working out, I'm like, I could at least do 20 minutes or 10 minutes. Everyone has 10 or 20 minutes that they can wake up a little bit earlier or find the time to get it in. And I know that if I do this, I'm going to feel way more equipped to go through the day. So I've gotten in this routine and I just wish that I would have like understood much earlier how much this would impact my life. I think school would have been easier for me, college, my first job. I feel like I would have handled life a lot better in my 20s when I was so stressed out if I would have just made working out a thing. All right, number two is, again, in the morning, starting the day with gratitude. Now, I know I talk about gratitude all the time, but I really can't talk about it enough because It changes your life. It changes your life and it makes you a magnet for everything you desire. So if you want something, be grateful for it now. If you love something and you want to keep it in your life, be grateful for it now. What you appreciate, appreciates. And it needs to be a daily habit. And again, if you start with that in the morning, you are priming your subconscious mind to look for more things to be grateful for. So you're naturally going to feel happier. Your mood is going to be better. You're going to be more positive throughout your day because you're starting out the day 
priming your subconscious with something really positive instead of priming it with the anxiety and the stress that might lie ahead in your workday, for example. So make it a daily habit, and it doesn't matter what the habit is. Uh, Right now, I fill out an entire page. I write it out in the morning. Some mornings when I'm really rushed, I'll just say to myself things that I'm grateful for. Uh, When my daughter was younger, on the way to school, we would say out loud three things. All right, three things that you're grateful for. And we would try to like outdo each other every day and make it a game. So you can get your kids involved. You can make it work with your schedule. You could do it while you're in the shower or brushing your teeth, just thinking of what you're grateful for. But the point is just do it. Whatever works for you, just stack it on as a habit that you're going to do when you do something else so that you don't miss it. And you can easily build this into your day without adding on extra time. All right, number three. You are not responsible for anyone else's happiness. This is a big lesson. And if someone decides that they're not going to be happy, nothing you do will change that, right? Because happiness is an inside job and we are all responsible for our own happiness. And you could try all you want, but if someone has decided that they don't want to be happy or they can't be happy, then you're going to give up your own happiness in trying to fix them or change them because at the end of the day, they have to make the conscious choice to look at things from a lens of gratitude and happiness and love. And if they don't want to do that, then it doesn't matter what's happening around them, what you're talking about, what you're doing, they are still going to be unhappy. Now, if you took that same focus and energy and focused on your own happiness, that is then leading the example for everyone in your life and everyone around you on what's possible. And we all know that everything is energy. And when you focus on happiness, you're going to increase your um, energetic vibration. You're going to be at a higher vibrational frequency. And that does affect everything around you because you become the average of the energy that's around you. And so instead of like trying to force them to feel happier and then you're kind of like lowering your energetic vibration to match more with theirs – you can just decide that no matter what, you're going to set this example and you're going to look at the positive side of things and you're going to look at the best case scenario and that will have an impact, a much greater impact on them than if you try to like force them to feel happier or to look at the bright side of things. So don't waste your breath. If someone has made up their mind that they're going to be pissed off, there's nothing you can do about it. And I wish I would have learned that a long time ago because it would have saved me Uh, a lot of frustration, and a lot of time. Number four, don't hold on to a job that makes you miserable. Okay, I've (laughs) I've done this twice where, well, probably more than twice, where I was in a job for far too long that really depleted me physically, energetically, emotionally, mentally, to the point that I had to go on medication. Um, And I promised myself, that I would never let that happen again. I would never stay in a situation that makes me so miserable. I had awareness. It, it, it did allow me to have awareness of my self-worth and know that I'm going to put up this boundary where I'm never going to allow anything or anyone to tear me down to that level again. And I'm telling you, like, you need to set your standards high for your life and not settle for anything less. And I see the majority of people settling for something far worse than uh, what they deserve and what they want in life. Like look at how many people are absolutely miserable in their day jobs but just keep doing it because they don't think that they could get any better and they've just resigned to the fact that life sucks, life is hard, and they have to settle for mediocre. That is not true. It is true if you believe it's true and you keep allowing it and settling for that. But if you raise your standard higher and you start setting higher goals for yourself, the physical reality will align with that. 
So that could be that all of a sudden you get a new manager or new coworkers or a change in the structure of your company and your job all of a sudden becomes enjoyable. It could be that you all of a sudden get all see all these opportunities that are right in front of you for something that would actually make you happier and, and you switch jobs. But I think the realization for me was that if I'm deeply miserable in this job, I'm already living my worst case scenario. And I could always find another horrible, miserable job. So why would I not try to find something better that's more fulfilling and makes me happy? So I quit. And I did find something better. And you better believe I would never go back to that job. And looking back, I wish I would have done it sooner. And I hear a lot of people say that. So take stock of what's going on in your life right now that you're putting up with just because you feel like you don't deserve better or that's just the way things are and know that you can make the conscious decision to choose better and to level up your life. And you're probably going to wish you would have quit that job sooner. Number five, invest a minimum of 10% of your income from the moment you start making money. So I remember people telling me this in college, and I'm so freaking glad I listened to them. Because now when I look at my investment account, compound interest is taking full effect. And I'm just so glad that I started doing that from the moment I got a job because it just became a habit and it was money now that I never missed because I just directly, you know, put it into this investment. So whether it's a Roth IRA, an IRA, a 401k, if you work for a company that offers that, just get in the habit of setting 10% aside and letting compound interest work for you. That's putting your money to work for you. And the earlier you do it, the more that compound interest adds up and the more money you have. Um, And it can add up very quickly. So a lot of people, you know, they get to be my age and they realize this and they wish they would have started earlier. And all I can say is it's better late than never. And if you start now and another 10 years, 20 years, you're going to be so glad that you did. So 10% is not that much um, to set aside for your future self and to put your money to work for you. Okay, number six. So this has to do with who you marry. And I will never forget my college psychology uh, professor. She used to be a divorce counselor. So she always, like most, most of the time her class was just her telling us stories of when she did this and what she found. And it was so fascinating. And something that she really ingrained in us was that the person you marry, the person you decide to spend the rest of your life with, let's say, whether you're married or not, the person you decide to spend the rest of your life with will determine 90% of your happiness. Now, I don't know if this is an actual statistic, but I do know that I I really believe this to be true because you're the average of the person you spend the most time with. I don't know how many times I can say that. And the person that you're married to, that you're living with, that you are around the majority of the time is definitely going to either suck the energy and drain the energy out of you or add to the energy that you have. So if you're in a relationship that is unhealthy, that's toxic, it's going to have an effect on you and your overall happiness and your life. So choose wisely. And if you're in a bad relationship where you're constantly feeling drained, guess what? Like That's going to affect your entire life, every single aspect of your life, your mental health, and your happiness. So again, take stock of the situation. And just like with the job thing, you deserve to be happy. You deserve to have a happy life. You're not responsible for anyone else's happiness but your own. So if you're in a relationship that makes you deeply unhappy, ask yourself why. What in you makes you feel like you don't deserve better? What in you makes you feel like you have to stay in a situation that's anything less than beautiful and joyful? So again, like, don't find yourself sticking around because it's one of these things where just like the job, you're probably going to wish you would have 
cut off ties earlier if there's someone that really is bringing you down. So I think that there's something that a lot of people go through, especially when they're younger. And I know I was in it. And um, I just, you know, I think that every person, especially every young person, should know that they should never have to tolerate um, being treated in a way that makes them feel depressed, unhappy, unworthy, etc. Now, this is going to sound like I'm totally contradicting myself, but number seven is knowing that every relationship goes through struggles, okay? So when I was in my 20s, it was like I would look at other couples that I was friends with or that I knew or, you know, family members, whatever, and I would see other people that seemed so perfect, like their relationship seemed amazing and I would wonder, like, why is it mine that perfect? And, like, maybe there's something wrong. And, you know, um, so-and-so never fights. And so-and-so is always so nice to their spouse or girlfriend or whatever. But guess what? (laughs) Prince Charming doesn't exist. He doesn't exist. And neither does Cinderella, right? You're not perfect, so you cannot expect anyone else to be perfect so I think that there's like this other side of the coin where there's a lot of people that look at the last point and think like okay well I want to be in a happy relationship I want my prince charming so everything has to be perfect and that just doesn't exist and every relationship is going to go through struggles it's going to go through hard times so if you for example get in a fight in your relationship, it doesn't mean that you're not meant to be together. It just means that you're going through some shit. Everybody does. So I think there's the difference of understanding when you're in a toxic situation where you're constantly um, being, you know, emotionally or mentally like you're you're feeling like crap. Um, you're more unhappy than not. You're fighting more of the time than not. Then yeah, then revert back to lesson number six and find a better relationship but if you're in a relationship with someone that you you truly love you can't expect that things are going to be perfect all the time and that was a huge wake-up call for me and probably for a lot of people because again our subconscious was conditioned to believe that there is such a thing as prince charming and he's going to come and save the day and then life is going to be perfect And you're never going to fight. And it's going to be like true love forever and ever. And you just live happily ever after. Like we are so programmed to believe that from every Disney movie, every, you know, rom-com that there is. And the reality is that no one's perfect and you're not perfect either. And neither am I. So how can I hold my significant other to a standard that I can't hold to myself? Right? So... Just know that and also know that all of these perfect couples that you see around you are far from perfect. And I learned this eventually. Like a lot of the couples that I looked up to and I thought like, man, they have it all together. They're so perfect. They're so cute together. Like I wish we could be more like that. Turns out a lot of them were the ones that were like the most fucked up having some really deep issues that I found over time. So Don't compare yourself to others because you never know what's really happening behind closed doors. And just know that nothing's perfect. There's going to be struggle. You just have to look inside yourself, ask your intuition, know what's in your heart and decide, is this something that is worth fighting for or is this something that's keeping me in a miserable place the majority of the time? Okay, number eight is deciding exactly how you want your day to go. So every single morning, I say or write affirmations declaring what I want. And you'll be amazed at how much will happen when you just decide. You just declare exactly what you want, how you want conversations to go, how you want your day to play out. Maybe you have to give a presentation at work and you walk through exactly how you want it to be. Maybe you've got a new course you're launching and you want X amount of people to sign up. But just determine 
every single day. Like today, I'm going to feel so happy. There's going to be so much abundance around me. I'm going to have so many opportunities. So many goals are going to come to fruition. Um, I'm going to talk to this person and they're going to agree to this and blah, blah, blah. Paint the picture of your day and you will be amazed at how much of it will happen when you just prepave your day first thing in the morning. It's it's freaking crazy. It's It works like magic. Try it out. Number nine, if you change your environment, you'll change your life. Now, I always tell people like you don't have to change your environment. You could stay where you're at and, and still change your life. But I do think it's challenging. I think that there is something to be said for changing up your environment. So I grew up out, right outside of Chicago and I just, I never liked the energy there ever. Like I always felt stressed. I always felt on guard. I always felt like people were inherently bad and out to get me and I just didn't feel happy. And I always knew I wanted to move, always, ever since I was a little kid. And the moment I graduated, I packed up my car. I didn't even go to my graduation for college. I just packed up my car, headed south, and moved in with my boyfriend at the time, who I'm now married to. And I remember feeling so free because I thought, no one knows me here. I am in a completely new town where no one knows who I am. They don't know my past. They don't know anything about me. I could be whoever I want to be. I could completely reinvent myself. And I did. I leveled up. I became a version of myself that was better, that was happier, that was funnier, that was more joyful, more easygoing. And I felt free to do that because I I didn't have any ties from the past holding me down. I could be a new person, a new version of myself. And then I did it again when I moved to Florida where – I don't know, just being in this place where the sun's always shining and there's greenery year round, it really improved my mood. And I just found like people are happier. People are more outgoing. People are more friendly. People uh, go about life in this more like this easygoing way where like stress is not a thing like it was living in Chicago. And it, it really has had a huge impact on my life. And I think if I would have stayed in Chicago, I would be living a very different life right now. And and I know this is not to say anything negative about anyone who decides to stay because some people love it there and feel great and never had the same issues that I had. But if you feel like funky energy where you're living and you feel kind of down, maybe it's time to shift things and to move. And I know when I first moved, I told my family, I was like, I'm going to give it six months. And in six months, if I'm not feeling happy and I haven't built a life that I'm proud of there, then I'll come back. And within six months, I was like, there's no way I'm ever going back. And then when I moved to Florida, it was like, I instantly knew I'm never going back. So, you know, you can set time limits too and just tell yourself, you know what? If this was the wrong move and I'm not happier and I don't feel better and I'm not able to like level up, then I'll go back. But I do think shifting your environment, getting away from your daily routine and just trying something new, it shakes up your life and can bring a lot of really cool things together that wouldn't otherwise happen if you just stay in the same routine in the same place with the same people forever and ever. And last but not least, number 10. You can consciously change your mood. This was a wake-up call for me. I always thought that my mood was my personality. Like, well, I'm just a kind of a depressed person, a pessimistic person. That's just who I am. It's part of me. It's part of my personality. That's so not true. And just like I said, I moved and I'm a completely different person. Those parts of my personality were not part of my personality because I don't have them anymore. They were just part of my environment part of my mindset, part of my thoughts that I was able to shed and let go of because I made the conscious decision that I don't want to feel that way anymore. I don't want to be pissed off all the time. I don't want to feel stressed all the time. I don't want to feel down all the time. So I'm going to make the conscious decision to feel good. I'm going to make the conscious decision to wake up every day and think about all the things I'm grateful for and work out and get outside in nature. And guess what? All of those things boost your mood because your mood is just a state of being. 
It's not your personality and it can shift and there's so many tools and things that you can do to shift it. You can listen to music that makes you feel good. You could do something nice for someone else. You can go outside in nature. You can even force yourself to smile or watch a funny video and laugh and your mood will dissipate. It will shift. It is not you and you can change it anytime you want consciously. And once you realize that, You feel powerful. You feel like you can do anything knowing that you have conscious control over doing things, shifting things that are just feelings. They're just states of being that can come and go. But you don't have to live there. You don't have to stay in a deep, dark place. You have the power to shift it. So those are my top 10 things that I figured out so glad I did. I wish I would have known this when I was much younger and hopefully this will help you make some subtle shifts in your life that will make you feel happier and make you realize your power to create your reality. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I'll see you next time. If you got something out of this podcast, then pay it forward by sharing it with a friend. This is the best way that you can support the podcast and spread good vibes. And if you're left thinking that you want more, you want to keep listening, then download the Manifest It Now app and subscribe so you can become a member of the Inner Tribe where we meet on Zoom twice a week and you have live workshops every other week by guest experts and you get to meet with a high vibe community and keep the conversation going. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you back here next time.